If you're a person of faith, it's almost a certainty that at some point in the last two years, you've worshiped from someplace other than your usual congregation, right? Yeah, the house, the exactly. couch. Exactly. Yep, the pandemic forced houses of worship across the world to kind of shut their doors and many have only just fully reopened within the last few months. But what is the long term impact of all those at home sessions on people and on those buildings? SHB 41's Taylor Hemnes goes 360 to find out. You can tell this building was was constructed for over a thousand people to be in here at a time. Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception is one of the oldest. The cornerstone was laid in 1882. And most well-known churches in Kansas City. It's not the tallest building on the skyline, but it is the flashiest. And it's just as beautiful or flashy on the inside. Many of our guests who come here will notice immediately the beauty of the building. It's one of the things I hear about the most from a visitor. But its future, like so many church buildings, is not as easy to see. A Gallup poll this spring showed that roughly four in five Americans say their lives are at least somewhat, if not completely, back to normal post-COVID. But a poll from Pew Research around the same time found that only two in three regular churchgoers had returned for in-person services. So we're going 360 on that question. Are church buildings, houses of worship like this, still necessary in the days after COVID? You'll hear from a woman who's gone to church her entire life, but now chooses to worship from home. From religious leaders about what they value in their buildings and reinvesting in in-person services. And the founder of a brand new church in Kansas City with a different goal for Sunday worship. The need for a building in which to worship is universal. A mosque is a part of the Muslims' uh, life. They, they cannot keep away from the mosque. Imam Dr. Abdelhamid Al-Jazawi leads the Islamic Center of Johnson County, a mosque that was basically closed to people for almost two years during the pandemic. Muslims are called to pray five times a day. It's highly recommended to do it at the mosque. You can do it at your work, you can do it at your home. We as Muslims uh, have flexibility in our religion. But the Imam remembers a night when the building was closed and he got a lesson in just how much it means to people. The first night of Ramadan, I see a family came with their mats, pray outside in the parking lot. I was crying at this moment. I was crying at this moment. What do you see as the importance of a of a physical building like this to be able to gather and, and worship. It is it's sacred space, but it's it's a place designated for divine purposes. It's not just coming into the building, but having the entire experience of, of the Catholic Mass, its rituals, its sounds, its smells. You you just don't don't get in some other type of environment. That other environment, for so many people of faith, looks a lot like this. A screen and a couch. April Shields has gone to church her whole life. I was a little girl with the frilly socks and the lace and the Easter speeches. She's now a member of United Believers Community Church in Kansas City. But this church lifer says she's staying home on Sunday mornings now. This is my, it's my sanctuary. This is the place where I have peace and I can come and no one, no one's going to disrupt my peace while I'm here. I've really learned during this entire thing that self-care is really, really important. And it's not just going to get your nails done or your hair done. It's about taking the time to rest. Virtual church, not a term that many people were familiar with prior to the pandemic, but obviously that's no longer the case. Take, for example, St. Andrew's Episcopal, where I'm standing this morning here in Kansas City. They, like so many other churches here in KC and really all over the world, have made significant strides and changes in the way their presentation is done for people at home. If the church doesn't do that, I think it's going to miss out on on a significant number of people who aren't coming back in person or may never start going in person because it just wasn't a part of their experience. Adam Hamilton is the lead pastor for Church of the Resurrection. It's one of the largest United Methodist congregations in the world. Thousands watch their services online, but he says even at a time when church attendance is declining, online can't be the only offering. And the church is the people. And you know, we used to do this. I never can remember how it did it. You know, here's the church, here's the steeple. Yeah, right. And then see all the people. And I think it's about community. There are hospitals and there are healing centers and there are places of love and, and community and warmth. And if a church stops doing those things and stops sending its people out to serve, it's going to die. Rabbi Stephanie Kramer of Congregation B'nai Yehuda took that thought one step further. 
Churches, mosques, and synagogues have to be aware of what people need from their worship services, no matter where they are, and be ready to provide it. When film got cheap enough that people were able to start taking pictures on their own, or even when you think about digital pictures, there was a real worry of whether paintings would continue. And yet, paintings have continued, right? They're even more unique, they're even more special. You just told me how much you love going to services on Sunday morning at your church, but I bet just as much as you love doing that, you get something out of prayer when it's just you, when it's the personal prayer, when it's out in nature, right? It's feeding different pieces of our soul that we need fed in really different and unique ways. So the future? could look like this. This year, Numa Community Church began meeting in Kansas City. Their members meet together in a rented space two Sundays a month. But on other Sundays, they gather in assigned small groups in people's homes. You get really lost in a crowd of a thousand people, but in a, a group of a hundred or so, you really get to know and um, form relationships. Pastor Joe Ratterman told me right now there are no plans to open their own building. The goal was to offer something different because moving forward, people of faith need to be open-minded about what's possible. I think an emphasis on less centralized gathering and, and more of an emphasis on uh, smaller expressions of church. I love what the pandemic did for the church. I love that it caused us to ask the big questions about why we do what we do and what's most effective at reaching people. Well, the answer to that obviously isn't clear yet, but the question is a big one for every member of a faith community. The academic perspective is another that we'd like to share. That's the topic of this month's Faith in KC podcast. Taylor is joined by a team from the KU Religious Studies Department to discuss a research project they recently completed on churches in Kansas. It's available now on our Facebook page and KSHB.com.